little bit earlier, uh, there is going to be a decision by Obama, Mr. Sartoro. Probably within the next couple of days, uh, he's hunkered down with uh, De Defense Secretary Robert Gates. And uh, they're going to decide uh, troop strength in Afghanistan. And, and I find this all rather fascinating that, uh, uh, by the way, uh, the elections in Israel, uh, Netanyahu is poised to take back over the helm over there in Israel. Uh, folks, uh, World War III, uh, we will see. Um, the U.S. government, how it operates is beyond belief. A bankrupt government that cannot pay its bills without printing money is rushing headlong into wars in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iran. According for the Center for Strategic and Budgetary Analysis, the cost to U.S. taxpayers of sending a single, I'm not talking about a platoon, a company, a battalion, a single soldier to fight in Afghanistan or Iraq is $775,000 a year. We can't buy Mercs for cheaper than that? Joel in Wisconsin. Hello, Joel. How you doing, guys? Hi. I got a couple questions for the senior there. What would be the best website you could find out as much as you could in, on the Federal Reserve? You called yesterday, didn't you? I did. I have that question, too. Yeah. Gentlemen? Uh, well, um, go ahead, Rob. <laughs> Rob, it's on you. Um... I mean, we we could go back to, I don't know if he has a website, I'm sure he does, but Edward Griffin um, wrote uh, probably the, the, the finest book to explain to the layman how the Federal Reserve came into being and how it functions. Joel? Creature, creature yeah. from Jekyll Island. Yeah. Can't beat it. I mean, there's... Yeah, he asked me, Robbie, he asked me the question yesterday, you know, uh, how much money do we know? How much does the Fed have out there? I mean, we what, don't know. Exactly. Be, well, that's because there's never been an audit of the Federal Reserve. Right. And and to track how much money that, uh, that oh, we... Oh, was he talking about how we can track what the Federal Reserve is doing or just information about it? My that? main question is uh, how... What percent of our national debt is owed to the Federal Reserve? Oh, yeah, well, good luck and on finding that out. I was thinking may, maybe Bob Chapman could, could try to, he has lots of connections. If he could try to find that out, and, and whoever doesn't tell him, he could expose them. That would be. Yeah, funny. but, you know, they don't, they don't care about that, and they're well, not going to tell you. Well, you, then you could expose them. I mean, them. you look at the money that just went to the the Treasury, uh, the $350 billion, the Treasury Department refuses to tell Congress where the money went. And and they were ordered by, uh, by a federal court judge to do so, and they told the judge it's a state secret. <laughs> you, you live in a corporate fascist society. There's no freedom left. Well, the, the Treasury and the Congress are both branches of the – separate branches of the, of the government, but the Federal Reserve, which is not, you know, I was thinking we could find out more about that because it's not a branch of government. No, uh, but good luck on – look, yeah. you know, the guy – there have been many people, Joel, that have tried to extract information from this government. Uh, Bob Schultz, We the People Foundation. I mean, this guy was going to starve himself to death because he wanted the uh, head of the IRS, the then Rosati, to come to the National Press Club, you know, put all this fall to all to rest, that people are complaining about these income taxes, and it's, it's, not, a, it's not even a constitutional, let alone, let alone a fair tax or whatever. Uh, we, we got our response from the IRS. They said, we're going to respond to this by more enforcement. Yep. The IRS was put in place right next to the Federal Reserve as a mechanism of repayment of at least the interest, not the principal, at least the interest on the debt that they knew that we were going to be running up here. So if we can't, if Bob Schultz can't get a, a, the help, with the help of a congressman, to get these people into a room to question them about the legitimacy of their operations, 
they're not going to show up. Not, they're not, the banks certainly aren't going to show up if we can't even get a taxpayer paid representative of the IRS to take a few lousy questions. Right. Keep holding your breath, and and uh, I, and I'll make sure that uh, the paramedics rush to you with oxygen. <laughs> one more smaller one for yeah. for Bob. When the when the Treasury Department hands over new bills to the Fed, does the Fed compensate them with anything? Bob, did you hear the question? Yeah, I'm thinking. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Think about that during the break. Hold on, Joel. 800-313-9443. You're tuned in to the National Intel Report, the real talk radio show. Joel in Wisconsin, um, anything else, sir? No, well, Bob was going to answer that question. <laughs> well, it's pretty simple. What they do is uh, they credit the account of the... U.S. Treasury and debit the account of the Federal Reserve, and it's all bookkeeping. Okay. Ones and zeros. Is it an equal exchange then? Yes. All right. And I would have, I would assume that um, they would charge the Treasury interest for the money that the Treasury gave them, but I don't know that for sure. I just wonder, gentlemen, uh, with all of this that we're doing for the banks on the backs of the taxpayers, uh, why is it that the banks are not willing to loan us that money interest-free? What about a little debt forgiveness here? They've made trillions and trillions, and who knows how much money they've made off the American people in the last century. But, gee, why, isn't, why wasn't the provision in there, hey, look, you know, we're going to give you guys money to bail you people out, you users, son of a guns. Give us a break on the money we're going to pay you. Ah, but that, of course, would go against the grain. Joel, I appreciate your call. Okay. All right, sir. Julian in Scotland. Thanks for holding on, Julian. Hello, uh, John. Yes, sir. I was wondering what it is that uh, Bob was saying the other night that whether it's good to buy numismatic coins or, what, or it's good to buy bullion. Bob, you want to uh, take that one? Well, one of my favorites uh, ever since I bought coins in 1960 uh, has been numismatic coins, and that year I bought the MS64 equivalent, which in those days was BU, and um, I paid, uh, uh, there would be an MS64. I paid um, uh, $45 for the coin, and uh, today I guess it's around 1500 yeah. And it just shows you over the years that numismatic coins do better and the at this time the premiums on numismatic coins are very low and i would assume if gold goes where we think it's going to go uh, say to two thousand dollars or higher i would think that they probably would do the same thing they did the last time between 1976 and 1981 and that coin went from approximately uh We'll use uh, two hundred dollars a, a coin as a benchmark to eight hundred and fifty. Uh, excuse me, I get that mixed up. Uh, gold went from two hundred dollars an ounce to eight fifty, and that coin went from five hundred dollars to five thousand. And so, as we go along here, I think the premiums will widen, and I think that there'll be greater gains made in the numismatic coins than that will be made in the bullion coins. Mind you, they're both fine. It's just I think the profit opportunity is greater in numismatics. What do you think, Rob? Um, well, just for your information, 64 cents right now are uh, 16.95. There you go. But if you call Swiss America, they'll be uh, 22.50. Um, <laughs> I, asked, I asked this because uh, Bob was saying the other night that um, on one occasion that numismatic was better and next next evening it was uh, bullion was better. 
Okay, what, what program did he say this on? Uh, this, this was a few weeks back. Oh, okay. Uh, on this program? Yes. Okay. Well, it's, well it's, now it's, you it's, have the it's, definitive it's, answer. Well, it's kind of like asking a parent which of his two children does he love the most. Or, if need be, which one do you get, one want to get rid of to spare the other? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I can understand the argument. What happens to the premium on, on a numismatic coin that you're going to pay $1,700 for today? What's going to happen to that premium when gold gets to $5,000 an ounce? Uh, nobody knows the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, 64 cents at $5,000, it could be a $10,000 coin for all we know. Bob, uh, Robbie was going to let me know about uh, 